Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to All Saints Ecclesall as we gather to worship this Palm Sunday. A very warm welcome to all who have gathered here, and a very warm welcome to all who are watching on our live stream also. My name is Dan Christian. I'm one of the associate vicars here at All Saints, and it's wonderful that we are able to gather together to worship. And particularly as we enter Palm Sunday, the opening into Holy Week, as we prepare ourselves and we look towards the cross and the resurrection, we are reminded of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's wonderful that Hannah's going to be w- Hannah is with us. She's not going to be with us. She is with us, but she is going to become uh, a vicar. And uh, why don't we give Hannah a big congratulations? She's been selected to train for ministry starting for September, and she found out the news this week. So let's give her a big round of applause. And Hannah is going to be speaking to us later on in the service. Uh, A few other notices uh, from me as we enter Holy Week. We do have a full both online and physical program for you to engage in worship this week. Uh, Please do go on our website. Uh, All the details are there. But you can come into the church uh, from Monday and there will be Stations of the Cross placed all around the church for you to engage if you want to come for private prayer. On Monday, Thursday, we are having both an online uh, invitation event like we did at Christmas where you can create a do-it-yourself service in your own homes and you may want to do that with small groups. You may want to do it with friends and family across Zoom. But you can also watch uh, a live reflection coming out from Maundy Thursday and you can be present here at church and the church will be open again Maundy Thursday evening for you to come and pray. On Good Friday there'll be a series of uh, events, there'll be hot cross buns being given out uh, along the street just down the road, there'll be an Easter trail around the churchyard. There'll be services of reflection both here in church and going out online. And then you can, on Easter Sunday, join us at dawn or for an 8 o'clock, 9.15 or 11 o'clock service. Please do book through our normal booking system. Our service today can be completely found on your service sheet. Please do take them home with you uh, at the end of the service as you leave through the north door and please do recycle them in your own homes. I'd like to invite you to stand. We start on page one or page two of the service sheet. The Lord be with you. During Lent, we have been preparing with acts of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of Jesus' death and resurrection. Today, we come together and join with Christians around the world to begin this solemn celebration. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love so that united with him in his suffering, we may share his risen life. I'd like to invite you to hold up your palm cross. And let us pray. God, our Saviour, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah, to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As normal at our eight o'clock, we won't be singing and the hymns are in the service sheet for the 9.15 following. We're going to move into a time of confession. 
let us take a moment to bring before God those things we want to say sorry for. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world, restore us and bring us his forgiveness and peace, now and forever. Amen. True and humble King, hailed by the crowds as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way to the cross, which is the path to glory. Amen. Please remain seated as Hannah is going to read for us our Bible readings, and then she's going to speak to us this morning. First reading is taken from Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able for the gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on on them and sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. Do you please take your seats. I think there's two types of people when it comes to making decisions. There's the impulsive person and there's the apprehensive one. And I think we're all on the scale somewhere between the two, but I do reckon we're closer to one than the other. Conveniently, my boyfriend Sam and I represent these two people quite well. When Sam makes a decision, he has to be pre-warned about the conversation to even talk about the decision. He then goes away and thinks about it. Then we might have the actual conversation about it, but again, he will go away and he will think about what we have spoken about. And then after sometimes days, months, he will have thought about it so much to the point that he knows, and only then, 
does he know that without any of a doubt, he is making a decision that he's really happy about. There's a lot of thinking, and he takes a lot of time to process. But I represent the other person, the more impulsive one. I jump straight in, generally. <laughs> and if it feels right, let's go for it and just see what happens. I'm a bit of a gut feeling person, a bit of a yes or no, and then we'll just see how it goes. But what this means is that sometimes I have to reassess a little along the way for things maybe I didn't think about or things that I didn't take into account when I made the decision. Whereas Sam is then completely sure all the way through the process. He's made his decision, so he's stable and fine. Whereas I sometimes go through a bit of a loop. <laughs> I wonder what side of the scale you feel like you're on when it comes to making big, big decisions. Are you more of a jump in and see person? Or do you mull it over until you're absolutely sure? I'm going to come back to this in a moment, but let's look a little bit at our reading. Up until this point in the gospel, Jesus has been controversial enough, but also incredibly exciting for the people he's encountered. Miracles have been performed, people have been shown this newfound mercy and love that is so countercultural, and there's a big stir following. The Jewish people would have been familiar with the scriptures and the prophecies talking about a Messiah, and so it's really exciting. It's finally here. God's prophecy is being fulfilled, and the wonders that can come from that. But Palm Sunday also marks a point of change. Jesus has only just told his disciples, his closest followers, that they're traveling to Jerusalem because it's time for him to die. We've started the journey now from the wonder and excitement to where it gets a bit more serious for us. The crowds have grown and Jesus has built up this following of people that are seemingly in for the ride. But I often wonder if there was a moment where it kind of hits for them, where they realize what's about to happen. The moment where it all hits, where they realize that what Jesus is about to do isn't just a go-with-the-flow, easy, breezy thing anymore. It's all there in the prophecies. They knew it was going to happen this way, but I wonder what it felt like when the moment actually arrived. Can you imagine following when it hits you? Imagine being in the crowd. That the man that you're following is about to suffer and die for your life. That the man doing this isn't actually just a man but God himself and that the prophecies were coming true I also wonder how many people would have carried on following after realizing I wonder if you've ever considered how you'd react would you be carrying on in the crowd or do you think you'd need to take a minute to think about it a little bit more because the call to follow has just got a bit more serious and how do you think you'd be reacting? And I think that's where the art of big decision making comes back at you a little bit. My impulsive self would have been following along in the crowd, and then I probably would have had to reassess and make the decision all over again. I think that there was, there's probably a two-step process to my yes to Jesus here. There's the easy yes, there's the yes that's all about miracles and love and mercy for all. But there's the other bit, the serious bit, where actually the call to follow Jesus is a call to follow him to the cross. And suddenly it's not as easy as I maybe first thought, because the call is to lay down your life, to give it completely to God, to pick up and carry our own crosses. And as it says in another part of the gospel, to lose your life, to gain it. You might relate to my two-step yes, or possibly you're the other end of the scale and actually it was just one big leap for you. Or maybe you're still in the middle of that decision somewhere. And that's okay too, because that is life-changing. But it's life-changing, but it's also life-giving. The call just got serious, but it's also the offer of eternal life. Today is all about preparation. Preparation for Holy Week, 
preparation for Jesus dying for us and defeating death for real. But it also marks a good time of reflection, a time to reflect whereabouts you feel that you are on this hypothetical path to the cross. And as I come to finish, I'd like to end with some time of just a few minutes of stillness. Let's take some time to reflect on whereabouts you feel you are as we begin this Holy Week. As we are reminded of Jesus' triumphal entry and the week to come. You might have leapt in and be all the way there already. Or maybe you feel like that decision was made quite a long time ago and there's been a lot of stuff since. Maybe you're not quite there yet. But wherever you are, let's just take some time in stillness and reflection and I'll end with a Palm Sunday prayer. If you would like to chat to me or any of the staff team about anything after this service or during Easter, please do grab one of us outside or get in touch this week. We would love to chat. Loving God, give us joy in our hearts as we shout Hosanna. Welcoming Jesus our King with palms, celebrating all that we hope for as the Easter story unfolds. Then as the journey of Jesus turns towards Good Friday, Help us know that you are with us when celebration turns to sadness. Give us the faith we need to follow you on the way of the cross, which leads to life. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand. And as we reflect where we are on our own decision of saying yes to Jesus, so we affirm together our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Please join in with the words in bold. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated and let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we reflect on your triumphal entry, so may we see the God who didn't come in wondrous glory, but entered into humility, into this most difficult but most wondrous week of his life. Lord Jesus, help our hearts to sing Hosanna today. As we praise the servant king who enters into all our hearts and to lay his life down for us. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so aware that we live in a world where humility and sacrifice is needed so much. We give thanks for the sacrifices made by so many people over this last year and over these last few months in particular. And as we take our first steps out of lockdown tomorrow, we give thanks for the sacrifices born by those working in key roles, but also the sacrifices of each one of us born to protect each other from the effects of this virus. Father, I pray for the next few months and as we start to come out of lockdown that people would continue to appreciate the sacrifices that need to be made to bring us into a brighter and better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we live in a world of deep tragedy. We lift up to you those who are particularly struggling at the moment, whether grieving loved ones who have been lost, whether struggling with their own illness, physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. In a moment of quiet, lift up to the Lord to those who are on your heart today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for situations in our world which need humility and love so much. Particularly this morning, we lift up to you Myanmar and the violence that is occurring there. Father, we pray that you would bring peace into that situation and you bring peace by challenging those in power to give a better world by walking in the path of humility. We pray for those who have loved lost ones and pray that you would bring peace in their hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I'd like to invite you to stand for the peace. We can't physically share the sign of peace at the moment, but that doesn't mean that God's peace is not with us. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus... We have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please do, where you are, share the sign of peace to those around you.
we are only receiving communion in the form of the bread and I will drink the cup as a representation that Christ's blood was shed for us all. Communion will be administered to you where you are. Um, if you are not comfortable taking communion, please just keep your hands down when I come round to administer the bread. The Lord is here. So lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please do be seated. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his holy body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
the prayer after communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll be leaving out of the north door. Um, please do leave immediately after service. Once we're outside, we'll say hello. A final prayer a blessing to finish. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill us with, your, with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.